let's open in a word of prayer. And the rest will join us in time. So let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come again tonight, we just want to lift you up, lift the name of your Son up, exalt your name, his name. We really just thank you for this continued opportunity, Father. We ask for your guidance now as we seek to really continue to study this process by which we can interpret your word. We recognize that although this is a process and it seems to be clear, and there's a lot of uh, steps and a concise method, Father, we, 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 we still trust and rest in, in your spirit. And we recognize that we cannot really come to a true meaning of your word without your spirit at the same time, Father God. You have called us to, to study your word wisely, to, to go deep, and there is a human responsibility component. And so we want to be faithful to that portion that you've given to us to study your word. Help us to see your word for what it is, the, the, the revelation of your son, and help us to trust in him by faith every day. We ask now that the word of God as we study tonight will continue to transform us and conform us to the image of your son. We, we thank you for uh, revealing to us the glory of Christ uh, through the gospel. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things by faith alone. Amen. Okay, good evening and welcome to Hermeneutics TH100502. We are session number six. Okay, so for tonight, we're going to be looking into two specific areas that are very important. The first is asking important questions, and the second is making great observations. So tonight we'll be discussing how to ask important questions, and then secondly, make great observations. And th this task, these tasks may seem laborious, they may seem uh, a lot like a lot of work, and some people, you know, it's like they, they want to rush to game night to play the game of basketball, but they're not really focusing on the fundamentals. And what I hope that we'll see, you know, we are going very deep. We're, we're, we're spending a lot of time in these different steps, but I hope that you'll see that the more we focus on the fundamentals of hermeneutics, those, those different areas of, of the process, the better you will be, the, 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 your end product will be much better. So I really want to encourage us tonight, even though we're going very deep, to really, uh, the payday is coming. Uh, your, your labor will not be in vain. So just a brief overview tonight, we will be uh, discussing, asking important questions. So we will work through what it means to ask important questions, how do we do it, what does it look like, and then we're going to practice it. So we're going to first be asking, discussing how to make, how to ask important questions, and then we'll be discussing how to make great observations. So we'll be really giving you some, some keys, some, some highlights. Now, in many ways, for those who did the reading for the MAT, MATC, we're, I'm essentially talking about the same content that you read in Hendrix, okay? Might be slightly different, you know, so my perspective is it's essentially the same content. Maybe there's some different content, but it's the same topic and just view it as complementary. Uh, uh, so, that, so I'm complimenting what you're, you're getting in Hendrix. He talks about different ways to read. We're not going to really be, so some of the things we're, we just can't, he really discusses a big topic. We can't go through all of that. And, and in some ways, I'm also giving you some unique information but I really hope, I guess the blessing too is that if you're taking the other class, if you're taking the Bible, the, the, the Bible's big story, there's overlap here. So, so and, and my desire is really for us to just saturate our minds with this way of thinking. And so, uh, and so I'm really excited about, about our discussion tonight. And then we're going to have a workshop. So we're going to have a workshop in Romans 1, 16, 17. We're going to apply asking important questions. We're going to apply making great observations. And then lastly, we'll discuss the homework for, for assignment number six. Now, tonight what was due was assignment number four, and assignment number five will be due next week for sure, and possibly assignment number seven. I'm not 
you know, I'm, I'm flexible because everyone is, is maxed right now and we are a little bit behind. So I want us to be working through these assignments and, and turning them in, but it's not hard and fast. So, so at some point, maybe October, I will start being more strict. I just, I'm trying to be generous and, and working through these things. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the new content. So asking important questions, asking important questions. I first wanna ask, did everyone get the handout that I sent to you? Did everyone get the handout that I sent? Either you have it in PDF or you, did everyone was everyone able to view that handout? I'm just gonna look through here and you can either message me or say, no, I did not receive it. I don't see anyone saying they did not receive it. So I'm assuming everyone at least looked at it. Okay, great. Okay, so what we're doing is, what I, my plan is I, we're going to ask and we're gonna go through this, this PowerPoint and then we'll look at that handout briefly. Then we'll, we'll, we'll look at making great observations. Then we'll look at that handout again and then we'll start, we'll, we'll actually implement, implement what we're practicing. Okay, so that, that'll be the kind of the, 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 the direction that we're going tonight. Okay, so asking important questions. In the past, I would just say like, okay, ask questions, make observations. And, and I have really come to see that, uh, that we, all of us shouldn't take this for granted. You know, it might seem like a very easy task to ask questions, but there is, we can ask questions that don't actually get at getting, getting the, the, the truth. We also can ask questions that can never be answered. So there is a science and an art to asking right questions. So let's just work through here. And, and perhaps, perhaps you'll see something that you hadn't considered before. So the first thing I wanna say is asking questions is a skill that must be mastered. It really is a skill that must be, must be mastered. So that's the first thing I wanna say. I don't think anyone should, should think presumptuously Oh, you know, I already, I'm good at this. We all need to be practicing this, okay? So that's the first thing I, I really want to say and, and stress. So, so everyone can improve in this area, okay? Uh, number two, the better one is able uh, at asking a legitimate question, the better one will become at finding the answer and discovering the meaning of the text. So the better that you are at asking legitimate questions, the better you will become at finding and discovering the meaning, okay? And the reason for that is that if, you, if you're really asking legitimate questions, you're, 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 just not, you're just not asking questions that you already know the answer to. You're not answering questions that can, they're more like philosophical questions in relationship to the te text. When I say philosophical, it's almost like you're just, th you're thinking about, uh, deep questions that people always debate and, and, and there is no real answer okay so in many ways we can ask those questions but we don't actually we can't actually really answer them and so uh, and so it's not really helpful but you're asking legitimate questions because what it does is when you ask a legitimate question your interest if you're if, if you if you're if your your curiosity your interest will be will be peaked and you will search out that answer okay so asking good questions really causes us to then uh, seek to find the answer and, and the other thing i want to say is that some of the questions that we ask we actually find the answer in the text and so it also forces us to really look deeply into the text to try to find that answer so uh so there is, the better you are at asking a question, the, the better you will be at finding the answer. It's just a, 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 a necessary outcome, okay? And maybe you always have that example of someone who they don't. They just ask a great question, but they're lazy. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but but I, I have more faith in you than that. Okay, next big idea. So I, I want to just define it. So right now, this is a, this is, we're going to define what a question is, okay? So I don't wanna take anything for granted. What is a question? A question is a worded sentence that is expressed in order to elicit information or the study to obtain information. So a question is designed to gain information or to, 
or to force someone to study to obtain the information. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what a question is. So when you ask those legitimate questions, it forces you to either, number one, look into the text to find the answer, or to say, hey, the, the, the answer is not in the text, but if I research and study and, and look at some tangential areas, I can find the answer. And so two areas there. So essentially, to get it down to the, to the bare bones, what is a definition? Essentially, it is a request for information. It is a request for information. So that's what we're doing when we're asking important questions. We're asking the text to give us important information. We're, 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 we're asking this question and then we're going to find, we're going to, because we're asking the text or we're looking at the text and we're asking it, there is no one to give us the answer. So it's either gonna be in the text that we have to study or we have to study background information or surrounding context information. Uh, when asking a question concerning a particular text, you are not asking every possible question. So this is where asking good questions really comes into play, okay? There, this is what I'm also saying. There are a lot of questions that cannot be answered by the text. So you're not, you're not asking any possible question. Rather, you're asking specific questions that can be answered in research or upon further investigation of the passage, the more, uh, the more broadly, more broadly in the surrounding context or in scripture, okay? So you're asking those type of questions. The questions and answers must be related directly to the text itself. So there are some questions that might cause you to think, but, but it's, beyond, it's beyond the text. The text doesn't touch on it. Maybe it's tangential, and it causes you, to, by inference, to think about something related. But because it's not actually in the text, the text can't, if it can't directly answer it in some way, your question is now beyond the text and it's for a different time, a different place, a different text. So you do have to be on guard because when you're teaching or preaching or having a Bible study, you need to be text-based, you need to be text-focused. Let me just st stop here. Any questions or comments, any, any thoughts that this has brought to your attention. Is there a situation in the Bible, a story in the Bible that uh, there was a question then, uh, uh, like for example, like for Moses, Moses, when God called Moses, what is your name or how will I call you? How yeah. will I tell to the people your name? So was it the right question Moses was asking God? Okay, so, so this, your question actually is very helpful. So there are two different levels of questions, okay? So in your particular case, you're asking, so this is where you're asking a philosophical question about whether Moses was, a, that question was appropriate for Moses to ask God. So that, is, that would not be a question concerning this type of investigation. Because that's that we could say that's theological or that's philosophical. Uh, I mean, we could we could we could investigate that answer, but um, and maybe that if we're preaching that text, we, we would have to interact with that type of question. But but that's a question, like I said, theological or philosophical. These types of questions that we're going to be discussing is looking at what the text actually says. Okay, I don't know if that's making sense. So the question that we have is because of the narrative, the narrative elicits like a deeper philosophical or a deeper theological question, okay? Now, perhaps that would come into our investigation, but when we're looking at specifically uh, these questions here, this area of investigation is really focused upon what the text is actually saying. So it's questions related to the text or the stories themselves. Am I, is, is that making sense what, I, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so, those, so that type of question is good. We need to think about that. But in some ways, the, the text doesn't really answer the question that you're asking. God just says, this is the name. This is how, you're, this is how, I, this is how I will be known for all generations. But it doesn't get at, was Moses appropriate in asking that question? 
that's something we could discuss, but it's just, it's beyond the text. Our question would be, what is the name? Uh, you know, do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's two different levels of questioning. And at this point in the investigation, we're not asking those type of theological questions. Now, perhaps in, 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 in our second area, the explaining portion, or in the research where we're gathering, perhaps that's when we would revisit a question of that nature. I don't know if that's making sense. Is that making sense? Okay, okay. No. Uh, my question is based on the questions that were asked by Mary. Remember the story when Mary asked the question at the same, in the same way that uh, Sikaraya was asking almost the same uh, type of question. Remember, how, how can it be? How shall it be? Okay. If we are the one asking that kind of question, how can we be, how can we avoid being uh, or being uh, described in the manner by which Sikaria was accused of unbelief when he asked that question? That's what, exactly, that's why I'm saying those type of questions, that's in the story, but that's not the type of questions we're, we're trying to ask here. Because those are, that would be a deeper th theological or a philosophical question. Like Mary reflecting, why me? Right? That's a deep question of, of, of calling. That's not a question that we want to be asking at this level. At this level. We could say this is the level of exegesis. We would be asking, what was the question of Mary? That would be the question we would ask. <laughs> so there's two, what I'm trying to get is there's two different layers. And so... As we work through the process, I think you'll see some people will be asking questions that are beyond the text, and you'll say, no, 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 that question is, you know, and so we, we, that's why there is this practice. There is this practice. Right now, we're just trying to get at what, what the text is actually saying and all those significances so that we can draw together meaning, and then there's a time and a place for us to also have those deep theological and philosophical questions. I think that's a great, those two examples you gave, both Pastor Henry and also uh, Attorney Bo, uh, Boboy, those are really, they're getting to what I'm trying to emphasize. So that's really good. Th thanks for asking those questions. Um, so, yeah, so, so the questions and answers must be related directly to the text itself, the content, okay? Let's move on here. Uh, in writing out your question, you can also include your potential answer. So here's the thing. As we're making questions and observations, okay, you can write out the question, but then as you're looking at the text, you might see the, you might see the answer in the context. And so absolutely, if it's clear, write out your answer. I think you'll see as we ask questions, we'll probably have some people answering the questions in this time. And so, and so, uh, you have, uh, you can, that's fine. The, the question leads to an, uh, sometimes a direct answer. And then, it, then it, it, that's the difference between a question and an observation. Okay. So, so uh, you can also include the potential answer if it's in the context. Now, if it's not clear or it's debated and you have to study it, you cannot, later we'll discuss, you can't make it an observation. It has to remain a question that you're going to investigate. Okay. Um, if your answer, here we go. If your answer is in fact an observation or clear from the passage, change your question to an observation. So that's really where there are these two types of investigations, questions and then these observations or answers. Uh, if you think, if you think that you know the answer or it is clear outside the passage itself, write the answer next to the question, but include the comment research or confirm. Okay, research or confirm. Do not simply answer it. Don't simply answer the question as you are not learning but merely confirming what you already think that you do. So just to let me repeat, do not simply answer your question because a lot of times you're just confirming what you think you already know. This is the time to ask legitimate questions and, and, and we should really be self-reflective, we should be very skeptical and be willing to investigate those conclusions that we already have. That's part of the learning process. If we come to the text with all our presuppositions with all about what the text already says, 
and then we don't actually investigate. We're just confirming and we're not actually learning. Okay. So it's really important that, that, um, that unless it's really clear, if, it, if it's really clear in the context, then yeah, you can just answer and turn it to an observation. But sometimes it's not clear and we need to be really, we need to go to the text with our hands open, not trying to force it, not trying to force it in. Okay, let's go on here. There are, there are two kinds of questions that should be discarded. So there's two types of questions. We've been talking, we've been talking about these. So I'm just going to be very specific. The first type is easy questions. <laughs> These questions can be immediately answered by the text. If they can be answered, make them an observation, okay? So sometimes you're making such an obvious question, just make it an observation. You know, don't waste anyone's, don't waste your time or anyone else's time. So, so we should really be on guard with a question that's so obvious. You just have to be careful. Um, and, 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 the, and the point of that being is that, is that, a, uh, by, by um, we have to be wise with our time. Like Henry made the comment last week, like this is a long process. So we have to be wise with our time. So just writing out questions that are so obvious or we'll, we'll see some of those, but, but just really be wise with the type of questions that you're asking. And then secondly, uh, um, uh, irrelevant. Um, sometimes though they can be ir irrelevant and should not be included because they waste time. There you go. You wait, they waste time and they discourage a disciplined study, okay? So we, we, we need to be efficient in our study, and so we need to be really wise in the questions that we ask. And then number two, the impossible questions. So some of those questions like, why was Mary chosen? Impossible question. We can reflect on that in another venue. Maybe there is a place to reflect upon it or to be included in the practical section. I'm not saying to fully jettison it out uh, and just ignore it, but but when we ask impossible questions, you're setting yourself up for failure. The, the text can't a answer every single question. So we do have to be on guard. Really redundant questions or, or easy questions and then really impossible questions. And you'll see, you'll see uh, as you study you, and practice, you, you'll begin to see this. Okay, let's just really quick look at this handout that I prepared. Everyone should have it. And I just want to review it really quickly here. Okay, asking important questions and making great. I was just checking. I, I wasn't sure if a student was messaging. So let's just look here really quick. So uh, uh, just to review what we've already discussed and then to really quantify. So, so what, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm giving, I've kind of given some guidelines for the type of questions we want to ask. And now I'm going to give you specifics. Now I gave some last week, I believe, or the week before that, and also in the Bible's big study. There's overlap here, okay? So you're really getting multiple touches here, uh, but, but this is important. So let's just, I do want to, to give you a specific direction so that you have specific questions that you can be asking it, it for your assignment this week. So questions that should, that should be centered around these, so questions should be centered around these interrogative words, okay? Who, what, when, where, why, how and for what purpose, okay? So, so our questions should, should be centered around these type of interrogative, uh, these interrogative words, okay? Now, I do have specific questions that can help you, okay? Now, you're gonna have to make them more specific. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just take these questions and then just your assignment. Oh, who is the actor? Oh, who is this? So this is a guideline, but, but knowing someone will just copy and paste. No, I, you, you should not have the same. Th these are to, to help. So uh, you, should be, you should be using these as a template or as a, as a guide, but you should still have unique questions. Okay, so this is to help. This is to help you. And in many cases here, you can use these to make your observations as well. All right, so who is the actor? What is the action? Who is receiving the action? What is the object? How are the persons being described? So these are, you have, you have an actor, maybe there's a descriptive idea connected to him. How are the actions being qualified or described? So we will, we will answer some of these in the observation portion of our, of our PowerPoint.
but really asking what are the act, what are what are the qualifications of the action? For example, needs. For example, time. When does the action happen? Is the action past tense? Is it future tense? So, so we want to be asking those type of questions. How does the sentence relate to the previous sentence? How does the sentence relate to the subsequent, the succeeding sentence? So these are questions that really deal with the specifics. If you're going to go sentence by sentence, these are specific questions. So, so you as someone asking questions, you could even use this as a template to go through this. And then maybe there's a, a, a it's, it's going to cause you to do a, a more specific type, to ask a more specific type question. But this could be a good template, like a checklist, okay, um, as, you, as you work through your passage. And, and if you can answer it directly from your passage, you're just going to make all those observations, okay? And so you'll see in the assignment that you can ask, you're looking for either 15 questions or observations. So, so you could have mostly observations or mostly questions. It just depends on how much your text, you, how much your passage is giving you. Uh, questions related to the broader context or story. So again, I think in some ways this is a review, but how is God being described? What are his actions? How is man being described? What, is, what are his actions? What is God's requirement for man, his will and his command? How does God communicate with man in that particular context? What are God's promises, if there are any? What is man's relationship with God? Uh, we'll see in Romans that there's, uh, there's really a big discussion with this relationship with God. So this is orienting us to ask these appropriate questions. Is Jesus Christ or his gospel present in the context? If so, how is Jesus or his gospel related to the passage of scripture? Is there a scripture citation in this passage? So these are good questions to ask to lead to other questions or to, 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 to give you observations, okay? So, so these essentially, you should have printed this out. You have a copy of this on the, um, on the, the EVST group page, the Hermeneutics group page. But th this is a great pattern. I've given you a great pattern. I don't really go further than these questions when, I, when I'm preparing myself. This is a, this is, and again, I'm not expecting you to do every single question, okay? This is just giving you ideas. It's giving you a, it's giving you a path to go. Almost like a, almost like a, what do they call that? A, uh, you're searching for something. Like a, anyway, I don't know what the word is. Okay, any questions or comments? Any questions or comments before we go on? Question. Yeah, Koya. Uh, when we ask questions, uh, because uh, we have in mind is the interpretation, right? Uh, can you still ask questions that is not uh, interpretative of any word or sentence? Like, um, what? what is the meaning or what is the context or in what context can we apply this to ourselves? Something like that. Can we ask that kind of question? Yeah, so, so that type of question would be a more application question. And I think I might, I might discuss it or we'll discuss it, but that's a more application question. And that would be reserved for the, the third step. We have observe it, explain it, apply it. So that type of question we would, we would, that's not in the text itself again because that's a that's an application question that would be reserved to that third step good question good question in many ways the only way that you're going to be good at this is just practicing and in many ways that that's this will become more clear as you practice so in, in a certain sense yeah that's that's the reality any other questions and then we'll go on to observations any other questions Team, <clears throat> okay. In James chapter one, just an example, okay. James chapter one, verse one. James, a servant of God. So the question is, a possible question is, how can be a servant of God? Yeah. So so. 
right off the bat from our from our conversation before class, right? You could say, "Who is James?" Right? And <laughs> you have so many. So, so, so the text is saying, "Who is James?" Now, you, we're all pastors, right? So, so we know there's there's the the James the the, the, the apostle. There's the brother of, 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 of Jesus, I believe, who's James. There's several different James. There's James Alpheus, I, right? There's, you could just say, oh, it's James, the brother of Jesus. But that would just be inferring your already preconceived notion. That's where I would say, no, you, you, can't, you can't answer that question yet. You can put down your known possibilities, but that's a question you need to research. You cannot move that into observation because – it's not clear. The context is not clear which James. And so maybe that's your, your question of like a servant of God. Like, 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 does that help me answer? You know, how is that related? That could. Yeah. So, so some people will say like, he can't be the brother of Jesus because he calls himself the servant of Jesus. So, so there is, there is clues to guide us, but there's not, there is really a need to, to investigate. And then sometimes you're going to come down with a, a strong possibility, but maybe not a hundred percent, right? So it's kind of like that. Good, good. We can also ask the question, Sir Tim, like, um, who was James before he, he, you know, he got saved? Or who was James before he wrote this uh, book, for example, like that? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so you can explore that, and. At, at a certain level, then you're you're going into speculation because you have one layer that's uncertain. Okay, I'm making this choice. This is the James. Is it James the Elder, where uh, he's the head of the he's the head of the what, he's one of the, the heads in the, in the church in Jerusalem, or yeah. the brother of, of 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 Jesus or the apostle. And then now you're saying, well, what was it like before? So now you're moving down into different more and more levels of uncertainty. And so we can discuss those and you should come down with, with your hand open with some type of decision, but you just recognize that that's a question that probably can't really be answered with certainty because now we're going down, we're going down a path of uncertainty. Yeah. Good, 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 good comments and questions. Anyone else before we go on? Anyone else? I don't want to, I don't want to rush this and. Hi, Dave. Good evening. Good evening. Just want to make a comment on your, you say something easy or, or, or obvious. Because it might be quite subjective to some, you know, what I'm trying to say to you. Like, we, we is, is like it's subject of some we just we just took up the the look of James and it could be obvious and we see but really trying to objectively really find who is James it's not only really easy we are really studying the Bible we we know that this is a thousand years document so like we really see is like a subjective approach of I I don't know if you, you get what I'm trying to say. So are you? So are you saying that some things that might be obvious to some people might be not yeah. to others? It's quite, it's quite subjective. It's yeah. quite subjective. That's right. No, and, and there is a range of uh, there is a range of of questions like that. And there's also a question that might be obvious to you, but if it's not obvious to your reader, and I think I mentioned this before that you still have to, it, earlier when we were going through this the first time, that you still have to ask the question and you have to answer it because you're, that's part of teaching. What's obvious to me, like you said, it might not be obvious to someone else. And so I see that question is for the benefit of the I, I agree and I think that whole range of questions. There are some questions that are, uh, that there, there is those of you that are that are so obvious that you could make them, but 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 then when making all those obvious questions that you have an answer to, you're you're you could go out infinitum is what I'm trying to say, and at a certain level we have to be wise. What I'm trying to say is that we we have to. 
we at least need to be considering that we can't ask unlimited questions and so we need to be wise in the questions that we're asking that, that's the main point for, for saying that i'm merely identifying that we need to be wise and efficient in our question asking is that helpful yeah i'm following you too I'm, I'm just making a comment that really to some it's quite subjective and yeah. uh, <laughs> And, and your point is well taken, Alex, and, and, and that's a good qualification, that, that Alex is correct. And, and, I, and I think, yeah, so we do, we do want to, to uh, also ask and, and answer those questions in our teaching, in our preaching, especially for those that it might not be obvious. So fair, fair enough. There is that range of questions that we should also be engaged in at that level. Good. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. You're welcome. Great, great observation. Good discussion. I'm enjoying this. Uh, okay, let's go on. It's uh, let's finish this PowerPoint so that when the second, the second hour we can uh, we can get into the the nitty gritty, uh, the details. Okay, so now we're going on to making great observations. So if it's not a question, it's an observation. So Number one, in addition to asking questions, one must become a keen observer. The best and most successful interpreters are those who make excellent observations. These will help you in your, interpretative, your interpretation process, largely because you have investigated the text thoroughly enough that you will, you will have been able to identify most of the issues and almost all the, net, the information necessary for you to make accurate and correct conclusions. Okay, so um, being a good observer is really going to benefit part two and part three of the process. Gathering all the information now so that when you, by the time you don't go to your theological or your practical, you're like, I forgot about this, and you got to go back and you have to refigure it out. Um, uh, so doing, doing the legwork, attention to detail and laying the foundation at the beginning, we'll ensure that the building is solid and it's straight. <laughs> so, uh, the, the foundation is the most important part of the building. You can replace a window, you can replace a wall. <laughs> Kuya Henry, how hard is it to replace the foundation? <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard to be fair. Yeah, so we want to be good here, so later it's easy. Laser is easy. Okay, so definition. What is a definition of observation? Uh, an observation is a remark, statement, or comment based on something that has been seen, heard, or noticed. So that's the idea of an observation, okay? Now we're going to limit that definition to hermeneutics. So what would be our definition? An observation is a statement or comment about some fact of information that is seen in a particular biblical passage or text. It is a fact. And so this is really what Alex is saying is so important. It's not a subjective, if it's subjective, it should be a question, okay? Uh, if it's an interpretation, it should be a question. It has to be a concrete fact. When we make observations, we are drawing out or identifying facts about the text under investigation that are present, but not that might not be readily apparent to the reader. So these are not really clear. You're drawing attention to them. So for example, uh, a, a verb has an action. God will save those who believe in him. I'm just making a, a sentence up, okay? The action is will save. It's, 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 a, it's a promise because it's a future tense and it's the, the, the action is being done by God. Now, we could say, oh, that's, 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 that's obvious. Like maybe, so this is where it's going back to obvious. But, but for other people, it's not obvious. So we're drawing attention. We're drawing attention to the fact that God is the, God is the actor. He's the one saving, and we are the object. So, so these are, we're just highlighting facts that might not be readily apparent to the reader. And we're really drawing attention to them because that's where the significances are. And then that's where we develop our theological truths, and then we can apply it to our lives. Okay, so we're really, this is where the observation comes in. We are, we are identifying facts. We're drawing attention to facts that might not be apparent to the reader. That's our job. Uh, 
Observations are not conclusions or interpretations, but are clear and not debatable. If they are debatable, like you know, wow, subjective, you need to investigate to confirm. And, and sometimes there will be a, 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 a somewhat maybe uncertainty. Maybe you're 95% sure, maybe you're 97% sure. Uh, and so that's where the, 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 the secondary and tertiary issues get in theology. There's those core doctrines that are clear and then those that are less clear, okay? But, but observations are not conclusions and they're not interpretations. So you need to really specify the difference, okay? Um, just practically speaking in our day, okay? So for example, one hot button issue is, is um, the, the fact, let's, let's just, okay, maybe this is a little bit debated, but right, the, the weather pattern is changing. Sometimes the temperature is going up, sometimes it's going down. The observation is the weather, the, the temperature is going up. To say, oh, th this is global warming caused by man, that's an interpretation. Okay, that is not an observation. Now you're, you're connecting, maybe you're connecting the fact that there's a high CO2 content from vehicles and from man-made sources, the temperature is going up, and then you're drawing, you're, you have these two observations, and then you're making the conclusion global warming is caused by, by man, okay? So again, I'm not, I'm not here to say yes or no. I'm just saying that, that the conclusion man is causing global warming, that's an interpretation. The facts are that the temperature is raising. You know, the fact is that man is emitting CO2, okay? So I hope we can, we can clearly see the difference between an observation and then the conclusion, okay? And we can do this for many different things. The purpose for making observations is that we can use these facts to move towards interpretative explanations and conclusions that are appropriate and correct truths about the particular text. Certain facts prevent certain erroneous conclusions from being drawn. So we identify some facts, we can, we can exclude certain conclusions. And so I hope tonight we'll see some facts that really will exclude some, some conclusions, uh, erroneous conclusions concerning our salvation. I hope we can do that. Uh, uh, so now we're going to get to, this is, we're gonna go back to our, 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 our handout later, but now I'm just looking through, I'm just working through the handout. So if you print out the handout, you have it on PDF. I'm right now looking at this idea of actors, okay? So I'm just, I'm just going to give you some, some a brief information about actors. An actor is essentially, if you want to write this down, I don't have this in the PowerPoint, but an actor is the one who is doing the action. So think act, the root is act. The actor is the one doing the action, okay? With that being said, because some are very, some are smart in the class, some are, are not as smart, some are grammarians, some are not, okay? Actors can be found in the subject, they can be found in prepositional phrases, and then they can also be implied, okay? So it is a fallacy to say the subject is always, that the subject always contains the actor. That's not the case, okay? Action, so you also need to, in making observations, you need to identify the action. Uh, and we, we've actually been doing this. If you've been attending my, my courses, our, our sessions, our, our discussions, and in the prayers of the scripture, in interpreting Colossians, in, in uh, other courses in Christianity 101. We've been doing this, okay? So action, when you identify the action, you wanna identify the type of action. So what type of action is, we're gonna come back to this later during structure, but is it an action? Is it a command? Is it a prohibition? Which means uh, commanding someone not to do something, a command is commanding someone to do something. Is it a promise? Is it a desire? I want to come to Rome. That's a desire. It's not an action. It's a desire in our heart. That's the type of action. Is it a request? Is it a knowing statement? I know that I am saved, right? That the action is not, it's actually a state of being, of knowing something, okay? It's not a, a physical action. It's not a command. It's, it's knowing, okay? Uh, linking, a linking verb simply connects two, two ideas. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a subject. Maybe it's an idea with a description, okay? It just links the two. Uh, I am, uh, I am, I am Tim, right? So I'm just, I'm identifying myself as Tim, okay? A state, I am, I am angry, I am sad. It's describing the state of, of, of a state of being of something or someone. 
and then a statement as well. So there's probably other types of actions. I've just given a list. I would, in your handout, I wrote it out. I would definitely include these and then use this as a guide and to identify the different action words in the sentence. I would definitely use this as a guide. Uh, time of action, is it past, is it present, is it future, is it perfect? Now we know past tense, we know present tense, we know future tense. Perfect tense, you might wanna write this down. Perfect tense is a past action that still has a present effect. It's a past action that has a present effect. So I'll give a very specific example. If I said, if you're in my house and I say, uh, my dog is Bon Bon, okay? You're, you're in my house, you're visiting me, you're fellowshipping with me, and I say, I have loosed, better, I have loosed the dog outside. Uh, to you, that means the dog is, that's a past action. I loose, I have loosed Bon Bon outside but there's a present effect of the dog still running around. So I say, be careful when you leave. I have loose Bon Bon outside. If I say that, you're like, oh, it's a past action, but the effect is still ongoing. <laughs> you better be careful. <laughs> so so the, the, the big takeaway with the perfect tense is that even though it's a past action, there is still a present effect that's going on. And so there are some very important foundational passages that have this. So, Identifying time of action is important. Um, identify objects. So you have the actor, the actor is the one that does the action, you have the object. The object receives, the action is done to the object or the, 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 ob the object receives the action. So uh, an example of this would be, I could say I hit the ball, right? If I say I hit the ball in baseball, I hit the ball. Uh, I am the actor, the ball received the action. I hit it, right? Now, if I say I was hit by the ball, I am no longer the one throwing it, but someone hit, I received the action, okay? The ball also received the action because someone threw it. So I received the action as the object and also the ball as the object. Uh, in this case, it's the means by which I'm hit, but the ball could also be an action in another context, okay? but. Uh, so we want to identify objects, okay? And it can be a person, place, or thing, all right? Now, specific types of actions. It could be an object person. It could be an object thing. It could be an object concept. It could be an object action. Or it could be an object complement. So uh, most of the time, it's an object person, object thing. But like, so from last week, our study with uh, if uh, Romans 10, 9, if you confess... Jesus is Lord, okay? And that's in the specific structure, I think uh, in some versions they have Jesus as Lord. Uh, what is Jesus to be confessed as? Well, the complement is Lord, okay? So Jesus is the object, we're to confess him Jesus, and then specifically the, the complement to the, to the object. It's not just receiving Jesus, it's receiving Jesus as Lord, okay? So, now that's maybe getting a little more deep, more technical. I'm not really going to grade on that. Uh, if, you, if you highlight those things, we can discuss them, but that's at a much deeper level. I'm just giving you, especially Sonny had asked before for some of my methods. <laughs> so these are some of the methods. So some, some of you will just identify the object lock, that's fine. Some of you will go deep and have several different types of objects if it's necessary, that's fine too, okay? So, Please, again, don't feel that I'm pressuring you to do all of these things. I'm just giving you the range of possibilities and just take the ones that you can do, okay? Um, and then some of you will go deeper, some of you will stay less, and, th and that's fine. Both are fine, okay? Um, I'm not grading you on how well you can do it. I'm more grading on that you're trying, okay? Uh, uh, qualification of action. So we talked about before identifying the, the action verb and also the tense. Qualification of, of action is typically you'll find them in like prepositional phrases and other, uh, other purpose clauses. You'll see the examples when we work through the examples in the text. But the type of qualifications of action can be advantage, disadvantage, agency. So uh, God created the world through Jesus. Jesus is the agent by which God creates the world. Okay. So agency is the actual 
agent by which the action is carried out, okay? Uh, association, so uh, this idea of go with your brother to the store. You go with your brother to the store. With your brother, that's association. That's who is, that's who is to go with you to the store, okay? So, so some of this makes sense. There can be more, there can be less. I'm just giving you potential examples. We will discuss this more in structure and throughout the semester. So right now, I'm just, again, just highlighting those things for us. Cause or, or reason, uh, a comparison, comparison. Comparing to, uh, condition, if, you have if then, so we, we talked about these in the past. Concessive, so although, although he was a son, he learned obedience. So even though Jesus was already a son, he still had to learn obedience. So there, it's a concessive reality. Even though he's in this position, the action still needs to occur. Okay, so that's concessive. And again, we'll give more examples later on. A location, so where things occur is very important. Location, manner, uh, the manner is the, 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 the way in which the, the temperament in which a, an action carries out. So sometimes it's very important. So manner, for us, a big manner is, you know, do not rebuke uh, a, an older, an elder, uh, rebuke him in gentleness. First Timothy tells us. So leaders, as we, we, we correct or exhort elderly in the church, we're, the manner by which we're to exhort them is gentle. <laughs> so not angrily, not like a child. We are to treat them as a father and to gently correct them, okay? Those that are younger as brothers, and the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, Gentle, this is actually a really big manner that we fail. Uh, not angrily, not with a stick. <laughs> uh, opposition, so sometimes there's opposition. We'll see examples of this. Uh, purpose, result, reference, and so with reference to something, it, it's in respect to something. Separation, uh, spatial, that's, 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 that, that, that spatial is close to location. It could be movement. So spatial, think of space, it's moving possibly. Um, standard, in a, so standard, in accordance. So uh, um, uh, we've been looking at 1 Corinthians 15 in which, which uh, Paul was given over uh, the gospel which then he delivered to the Corinthian believers of first importance that Christ died for your sins, for our sins in accordance with the scriptures in accordance with the scripture is the standard so it's in agreement so standard is oftentimes whenever you see this word in accordance and again i'll give examples in the future but I, i'm just right now i'm just giving you these possibilities for us to explore uh, substitution so for our sins is a substitute in place of our sins okay uh and then time uh when when did this happen before is it past tense is it future you know so oh, i shouldn't say that um, there is, there is clauses after he, after he wept, he raised Lazarus from the dead, something like that. So after, after he cried, then the action occurred. Okay. So these, again, these are all the range of, of ways that action can be qualified. Okay. And again, I'm not expecting you to know all this. I'm just giving you the possibilities. There could be other possibilities as well. And so in many ways, it's, it's logical. It's, it's things that we can reason through. Okay. Um, describing a person. So we also want to look at descriptions, making observations about descriptions. So, so, so uh, going back to, to Henry's example, it's, the servant of God is not a question. We could reword it as a description. James, although he is, let's say you made the decision or uh, whoever James is, describes himself as a servant of Christ. Um, so that could be an observation. Okay, and, and, that, and that can have application concerning uh, how we should consider ourselves as servants. Um, this idea of servant really qualifies the fact that we're sons of God, but we're still servants. There's still that lordship component. So, uh, Pastor Henry, perhaps you can use that as an observation, right? So, that, that's a possibility there. Um, so, and you can, you can specify more details concerning the description. It could just be a general description. 
like an adjective, or it could rename. So Nicodemus, uh, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, and I think there's one other, one other qualification, who came to Jesus by night. There's three descriptions. He came, how did he come? By night. Uh, who was he? What's the clarification? Nicodemus, who specifically was he? He was a ruler of the Jews. So there's further ways that you can uh, uh, describe a, a person in a context. Possession. So uh, the servant of the Lord, that can denote possession. James is possessed. He is, he is underneath the ownership of <laughs> the Lord or God, right? So that, and that's, that's the significance that we need to think about. We think of ourselves as autonomous. We are our own kings. And it's, no, you are a servant of someone else. Uh, I was studying in my devotions today, 1 Corinthians 6. You are bought with a price. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.20. You are not your own. You are bought by the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Okay? So, so this idea of possession, this idea of, is very actually important. Um, reference, relationship, and source. And so uh, th these are, again, other ways that we can describe perhaps our, uh, the person is being described. Lastly, we can look at relationships between sentences. Again, this is a lot, but just write things down that are significant. I'm just giving you the range, okay? Um, you, can look at, uh, you can look at alternative or uh, not this, uh, either this or that. Do you, want, do you want vanilla or chocolate, right? It's an alternative, two different options, okay? Contrast, uh, not this, but that. Emphasis. I really need you to go to the store today to buy us food. I'm hungry. Okay, so that's maybe there's some type of emphatic uh, emphasis. Explanatory. Typically, the word for is explanatory. Um, inferential. Therefore, the key word for inferential is therefore. Um, therefore, uh, uh, because of the mercies of God, therefore, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So this therefore, inferential, think of therefore. Um, progression. So there could be a progression. I, I quoted earlier 1 Timothy 4 verses 13 to 16, I believe, in, on the root page, right, where the, the idea is to, um, to commit, devote yourself to scripture reading, public scripture reading, to exhortation, to teaching. Not only devote yourself, practice these things. Not only practice these things, immerse yourself in these things. Not only that, watch closely. These are progressive commands regarding this teaching, for engaged in this good teaching. Okay, so it could be a progression. Or it could just be series, or it could be transitional. Series would just be a list of different things. I went to the store, then I went to the church, then I went to the sorry sorry store then i went to the gym that i came home it's just a, just tracing a series of events there's no progression it's just a list okay and then transitional is is going into like a new topic all right um i'm in some ways rushing through here i i i apologize if it's a little bit of a rush just giving some more information from that handout okay we're almost done here we'll take a break uh other things we want to look for. Uh, Kui Bobo, go ahead. Uh, where do you put uh, narrative in the uh, relationship of sentences? Where do I put the narrative? Um, can you repeat Narrative, narrative. Oh, you're saying? Narrative. We need this narrative. How do, how do you put that in the relationship between sentences? Is, is that included in the relationship between sentences? We need this narrative. So there's actually a slightly different thing that we will use for narrative. This is more for like discourse and teaching. So epistle, epistles, we'll use this a lot in epistles. We'll use this a lot in like Jesus' sermons and discourses. Narrative, you can use these things. We actually do a plot trace where we look at, we look at the action going from initial, initial setting to initial conflict, rising action, climax, falling action. So that's a slightly different process. Um, uh, you can still use these in narrative. It would be the same, but just recognize when you get to the, your structure analysis, it does need to be slightly different. you approach it slightly different than like epistolary discourse, um, preaching type context, but you can use the same in narrative it, 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 at some level. Yeah. Great, great question. Boy. 
Okay, let's let's just let's just finish up here and then we'll take our break. So then the other these these are some other concepts that we need to be considering, and this is also from Hendrix. We need to be looking for repetitive words. Those repetitive words really are highlighting significance in the mind of the reader, uh, in the mind of the author that he wants the reader to contemplate. And so repetitive words need to be explored. You cannot, you, you'd be surprised and shocked at times that I've heard a sermon where there's a repetitive word, it's so important and it's not even really mentioned. It's like, that's primary. Why are we not mentioning it? So be looking for repetitive words and concepts. Look for lists. So there could be a list, all right? Look for cause and effect relationships. There, there could be cause and effect relationships. One thing that people often don't do is when you see a pronoun, you identify who or what the pronoun refers to. It, he, she, they. Uh, identify that pronoun's antecedent, so important. Okay, that's, that's it for the handout. So let me just come back here to this, the handout here. Um, so going on to the second page, I have really just given this to you. I've given you all of that that we just went through on the second page here, okay? So uh, Koya Boboy, it should be in your email. If you wanna check your email, maybe you saw it already. Um, but, but again, I wanted a handy dandy, when I'm, so if you can see here, I have, I have the handout here, okay? And when I'm working through the text, let's just say here, I have, I have, I have my, um, I have the, the printout. I would print out your text, even the, like, like, uh, like handwrite it out or, or just print it out. And then I have the handout right next to it and just, just work through it. So, so that's kind of the, the thinking of the handout is to use this. This is a tool. This is in many ways, this is like a tool. We have the cloud research tool. This is a tool for you to have to highlight the, the things that you should be looking for. So you should have it side by side with your Bible and with the text to work through. Okay. It's not going to give you all the answers, but it's going to get, this is like, this is your GPS. This is your roadmap. Okay. Any questions or comments before we take a break? And then when we come back, we will get into some examples. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Uh, I want to start with easy or obvious kind of question. Perhaps the qualifying uh, standard to the question is the significance. Because like, if I would ask, someone would ask me in the Old Testament, how did John uh, survived in the valley of the peace. It, it could be intellectual, but is that really significant? Yeah. So, that, so yeah. So, 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 go ahead, Tim. No, yeah. So, 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 your question is, your question is, um, can you just repeat your question again? I just want to make sure I'm, I'm getting it straight. You're, you're, sorry, just, just, re just repeat your question one more time. I'm going to start with my first comment that uh, easy and being obvious in, in observing the scripture is quite subjective. Uh, I'm commenting that perhaps the the underlying aspects or how we really interpret the question if it's easy or not is the significance of the question, the value of the question, because it. We are identifying names in the Bible. This is not just easy. I mean, it might be obvious, but it's not really that easy. So I hope you, 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 you get what I mean. Yeah, no, I'm, um, yeah, so, so I think that still goes back to, that, that goes back to questions that, so there are, yeah, so for example, the question with the belly and the fish, right? How did Jonah survive belly and the fish? That, and maybe, I don't know if you were here for our earlier discussion. That's a philosophical question. Or maybe that's a scientific question, but the text can't answer that, right? So the text says it as a fact. And so we either accept it or we, or we question that. If we question that as a fact, the, 
that's a whole different, that, that's a question beyond the text itself. So, so, so um, questions like that, we can discuss perhaps maybe, maybe you're in a, if you're in a church where, where your audience accepts the word of God as the word of God, then, then, you know, that would be somewhat of a redundant question because the church already accepts everyone in the church accepts it. So for you to go in, that might be a, a good example of what I'm referring to. The church already accepts that, that Jonah survived the belly of the whale because God, they believe in the word of God. And, you know, uh, maybe 20 years ago in, in, in the Philippines, everyone would have accepted, everyone's a high believer. Everyone would have accepted it, right? And question, yeah, Jonah survived, you know, because God sustained it and brought him out of the belly. And so that would be like an easy, redundant question that if you spent 15 minutes answering, everyone's like, no, we already accept it. Why are you spending all the time in that answering the question? We accept it. It's true, right? Um, but if you, were, if you were to preach Jonah in New York City as outreach or, or in, in, in a pub, sometimes they have like a pub. They have like a, a skeptics discussion. Yeah, you, you would have to spend 30 to 40 minutes and maybe you're fighting. It, it's very appropriate in the U.S. context, in an unbelieving context, but in, a, in the context in the Philippines, it's a redundant question. So maybe perhaps what you're saying, maybe getting more at it, is you also have to consider your context as well in, 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 a, in a redundant question. Because if I was preaching Jonah at TBC, I would not spend any time on how he would survive in the belly of the whale. Unless I knew there was a skeptic there. Well, I can just have a reservation team qualifying a certain question as easy or obvious. Perhaps I am really looking up to the question if it's significant, contextual, and like it would really affect our salvation. And that's what I'm like. I'm going in that direction. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, 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 um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure you're, because I'm not, I guess I'm not disagreeing with you, Alex. I, you know, maybe we're talking past each other because so, I'm not disagreeing that some questions are significant and, and, and some questions on the context, they could be redundant or easy, but in other contexts, they would be very important. I, I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I'm, Again, I, I'm just really highlighting the fact that uh, we need to be wise because of the process, because that we need to be wise in the questions we ask. That, that was the only intention or purpose of, of, of making the comment as far as rejecting an easy question. Maybe I should have said, depending upon the context, okay, maybe, maybe we could add that in there. But I'm not disagreeing with you that, that questions could be quite easy, but then in another, another sense quite significant. They could, they could be easy, but they could be quite controversial or subjective. Yeah, I, it, depending upon the question, that, that's within the realm of possibilities. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. So I just really want to emphasize that I'm not, I, I'm not trying to make black and white dogmatic statements, okay? I just want to be clear, and I don't, think, I don't think Alex is saying that either. I just really want to emphasize, I'm trying to give you a guide as you think about the questions you ask, as you think about the observations you make, um, I'm trying to give you guidance in going down that path. At the end of the day, every, every sermon has its own unique context. And that's why I, in an emergency situation, I would preach the same sermon or teach the same. But I've taught hermeneutics before and I'm using some similar, I'm recreating my notes, I, you know, I, because this context is slightly different. So I do believe that Every sermon, every, every lesson, we have to revisit it because it's a different, it's a slightly different context. Okay, so I, I, maybe, I hope that I'm making sense. Let's take a break. I, I want to emphasize too, everyone who asks questions, they're great questions. Even Al, Alex is, is making some good clarifications. It's helping me think through things. Um, let's be thinking through this because in some sense, we are talking in the theoretical. I do think when we get into the, the specific example, things will become more clear. Maybe you'll have more questions. So uh, at this level, we're really talking in the abstract and we need to get into the, the text. So let's take a break. It's, it's 717. 
uh, advantage of the break and we just uh, talk some more because I want to, although this may not be part of the lesson, but I just thought this might be important in our discussion as far as uh, the, the manner of asking questions are concerned. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit back and relax because my because uh, we in 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 law we are we are taught to make good cross examinations. So uh, probably that's why Alex was asking that question because of the significance. When you ask a question, one one guide for us in asking question is you should know in advance what is the answer you want to elicit from your from the from the person you're asking the question that is one element of cross examination yeah. you cannot ask a question without knowing what to expect what answer to expect you should you should know in advance what answer to expect whether it is in the affirmative in the negative because without knowing the the answer in advance it will be very hard for you to ask a follow up question so this is how we, we, we formulate our asking questions in, in, in the manner of cross-examination. I don't know if it is helpful in, in, this, in this hermeneutics thing of asking questions or interpretation. Will that be helpful, uh, Tim? So I would say, so this is what I would say. I would say that it will not be helpful and in some ways, and in some ways, now it depends. Now, again, so we have to, I want to take a step back. And maybe I should have been more clear in, in, in the, the PowerPoint. We're, we are looking at questions and observations at, in the beginning of the process, okay? So I am really giving specific parameters for investigating the text at that foundational first step process, okay? Um, so, so, so what you're describing might have great benefits in the practical, in the homiletics, in the counseling portion. Because as a counselor, when you're trying to get at, when you're a counselor or when you're a preacher and you're trying to deal with sin, you first have to get someone to a place where they recognize their sin and then you can deal with the issue, right? So in, 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 at, at that place in the process, um, as long as you're being fair and honest and, and, and with the person with the word of God, what you're describing will have great benefit there because you're, you're leading the, the person down a path to expose sin. Because as a pastor, we're, the, the word of God always exposes sin and always causes us to believe. Okay, so, so, so what you're describing is great in the homiletics portion. It's great in the counseling person. At this point, it's not as beneficial. It's almost like a whole different type of questioning. Um, you don't want to know the answer per se. You want, in one sense, to be stupid so that you, you confirm or you, so it's, 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 in one sense, it's a totally different type of questioning. And, and at this level here, it's not even in the second phase of theological. So even talking about significance, we don't want to talk about significance yet. So, so even when Alex is talking about significance, again, I'm not against looking at against questions that deal with great significance, that great with deal with philosophical issues, but in our specific uh, in, in our specific context in the beginning, even talking about significance is not helpful. Because look taking the Jonah example, the question you would ask is not how did he survive? Now maybe you want to ask that question in the theological or in the practical step. But not at this stage. You're just asking, did he survive? Yes. What did he do? He, he eventually obeyed God. <laughs> okay. Those are the type of questions you're asking. The other questions behind or beyond. Yeah. So maybe, maybe our discussion here is really clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. It's taken me a long time. The first class I had on this was in 2009 so that's 11 years ago and i've been i've had several other classes in hermeneutics and then i've also taught hermeneutics and i'm always tweaking and changing and my observation and even how i teach observation questions is really has changed over the time so it's a process things maybe you're going to disagree with what i'm saying but 
over time, as you work through the process, I, I hope and trust that it'll, be, it'll become more clear because it's, it really depends on the context, what you're, yeah, so. Most probably when you were asking us during our Colossians class, asking observation questions, most probably now uh, looking back, most of those observations and, uh, were not really observations, right? Korean voice, yes, yeah, some of them were not. But it's fine because that's part of the process. And you just had an aha moment. And I remember in my one class, my teacher would always, I would make an observation. He'd say, Tim. That's not an observation, that's an interpretation. Change it to a question. <laughs> so so that's, that's the aha moment. We, you know, we all have those. So, yeah, but, yeah. It's really, you know, Talaga, I mean, the process of asking questions, I mean, there's so many different contexts. In the scientific, even in the scientific, it's a different than, the, than, a, than a, a law context, a scientific context. In, in a scripture, there's, there's just, yeah, it's crazy. There's different, there's, it's different. It's crazy sometimes, though. In the scientific, no, the usual question that you ask is, what will you get out of this? <laughs> what will you do out of this? And what will happen after this? Yeah. Usually, that's the, that's the consequence. No, that's in the scientific field, once you discover one thing, you ask the question, what is next? Yeah. You know, and also, Koyo uh, Boboy, also, in, 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 a, in a, a, a court of law, you're also trying to be persuasive. Let's say you're a defense attorney. You're not even getting at the truth. Your, tr your job is not to get at the truth. Your de job is to defend your defendant. You are, you are, you are literally... Now, some people say, I can't do that. Fair enough, but, but your job is not to expose. Your job is to be an extension of your defense. The prosecutor is to be the extension of the, of the, uh, the district attorney, Diva. And so, in some ways, it's a totally, it's so different. Yeah, it's crazy. In, in, in uh, trial technique, if you are in the defense, you, you owe yourself, what is the theory of your defense? Is yeah. it buy? Is it merely denial? Is it wrong information? It is wrong date, wrong weapon. So you pounce your questions. You pound you you pounce your questions on those a very important aspect of the crime. Well, like you ask, uh, is that one uh, made by a knife or a gunshot? Uh, you would like, but actually, you know already that the, the doctor or the medical legal said it is a gunshot wound. But the witness, you would like to rattle the witness, and maybe the witness will commit a mistake and say, "Oh, it's a, uh, it's it's a wound from a uh, from a stab wound." <laughs> so immediately, that destroys the, the 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 theory of the prosecution that uh, there was a gunshot. It's true. It's really true. I, I said that in cross examination, you should know. What to expect? You should expect an answer already. You already how, somehow you have an idea what to expect when you ask the question. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's why that's why I said one 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 uh, guideline in asking question in cross examination: do not ask a question unless you are already expecting the answer. No, that's really good. That's one. That's one uh, technique. Yeah. Do not ask a question where you do not know the answer. Yeah. And, and even think of a different context in the business world, right? In the business world, it's all about the negotiation, Viva. It's about the negotiation. And again, those are different questions and those are different. So I guess what I'm trying to emphasize in talking to you is that we really have to, the hardest thing for us is to step back from our profession and then enter in the different world of the word of God. And, and, and even... Even entering as an exegetical uh, versus a theologian versus an apologist, you, even like apologetics, you know, <laughs> there's a whole different set as well in apologetics. And it's crazy. We have to just be thinking about, um, we need to be thinking about uh, 
the different areas, the different contexts. And that's why our presentation of the Word of God has to be so, uh, it's really contextual. It's really contextual. Is there, is there a subject uh, like apologetic? I lost the last part. What was the question? Is there is there such a subject as apologetics? Yeah, apologetics. Yeah, it's, it's it's its own area of expertise. You can do a PhD in apologetics. There's different ways. There's different debates. There's uh, in in the in conservative world. There's like presuppositional and then evidential. It's two totally different schools of thought, and there's huge debate between the two. It's its own. It's its own field it's its own field within theology do you teach that subject <laughs> that's not my so so if you look at my my area of expertise is really in biblical studies new testament interpretation that is my, i am an expert in that so but in in going through my mdiv to my thm master of theology of course i have foundational courses in apologetics and theology I, so I can teach all of them, but I'm not, like, even in the history of interpretation, that's not my area. So I have research re tools, and I can, but I'm not really an expert. So, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, everything connects. So, so even for me, I have a view on apologetics, and I can teach the course. But if you were to say, are you an expert? It's like for you, right? Are you a trial lawyer? Are you... Uh, a prosecutor defense like there's different areas right and so you can say oh yeah i can defend but i'm not it's not my area it's kind of like that yeah okay let's begin it's already getting late it's 7 30 everyone's back i think everyone's back turn in your bibles to romans chapter 1 16 to 17 i have it in front of us and we are now going to be pull out your do you have it next to you or if you have it on your if you have it on your um, your computer pull out your handout so what we're going to be doing now is Romans 1 16 17 if we if we get through here fast and we just do an awesome job then we can then we can also go on to we can also go on to Romans 3 21 to 26 so I have potentially two passages so we are going to be making good observations and uh, great observations and asking important questions so let's have at it so i'm going to i'll start us off i'll make a couple observations and ask some questions and so as i'm asking or as i'm making them i want you to start becoming involved okay so i want you to start just kind of join me in the dance <laughs> so uh let me first read the word of god let me first read the word of god and then we will discuss. Romans 1, 16 to 17, the word of the Lord says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness is revealed from faith for faith, as it has been written, the righteous shall live by faith. So there's a few of you here who took Christianity 101, so maybe you're at a little bit of an advantage to ask to make observations or ask questions, but you know, it's been a while, so maybe if you remember, that's, amazing. that's great. So let's, let's ask questions, let's make observations. I'm just gonna start off here. I just wanna highlight the, the action. So I see, I see one action here. So, Later in the structure analysis, I will give you all of these different, these highlights, the type of highlights. I actually have a concise method. So for, a, for actions, I always use a double red, a double red um, double red line. So I just want to identify one observation here. This is, I'm going to identify this as an you know, th this actually could be, uh, I'm going to identify this as a state. So that's an observation. I'm identifying the action or the verb in verse 16 is the state of not being ashamed. 
Okay, so so I could actually come over here. If, if what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and make I'll make a column here for observations and and um, so number one. Uh, well, let's let's do. I'm going to do several observations together. So I'm going to make an observation here of. Um, this is the actor here. This is the actor. Now, now, just looking at this verse, okay, just looking at this verse, it does not specify who the I is, right, technically speaking. But if I look in my Bible, it's clearly Paul, correct? And from our background study, we would know it's Paul, correct? That's part of the benefit. So I'm going to identify here. It's not a question. It's an this so this would be a, this would be an obvious question. I should not. Who is the who is the who is the actor? Right to ask the question, uh, who is the actor? Uh, obviously, it's Paul. <laughs> okay, so I just wasted my time. I wasted my time. So this would be an example of a redundant question that I don't need to ask. Okay, so Alex, this would be a specific example that, I, that it's just, it's, re, it's so clear from our, all the prep work up to here. This is clearly Paul. Okay, so this would, this is a, of course. <laughs> this, is, this is what I would be referring to as a redundant question. So I want to say, uh, I'm against, I'm, <laughs> No, no smoking sign. No stupid question. I always will say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but that's a redundant. It's a redundant question. So we have the actor as Paul. Okay. So I so the observation that I can make here is that Paul is now. I am going to uh, Paul is is in a. Is in is in a state of not being ashamed. Okay. Everyone see that? Now What is the opposite of shame? What's the polar opposite of shame? Proud. Proud. Who said that? Who said that? Proud. Ray. Ray. It's good to see you. Proud. So Paul. So Paul is in a Paul is in a proud state. Now who? Now. Uh, what in reference to what? In reference to what? So Paul is not ashamed, and then we have this reference here, right? In reference to what? This is a reference here. Paul is not ashamed with reference to the gospel. So maybe this is an. In let, this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bracket here because this could be an inference. I don't want to say it's an interpretation. Perhaps it is, although we're just re, we're just so what we're doing here is we are we are rewording this positively. So this is a negative. This is negative. So I'm rewording this positively. I am proud. Uh, uh proud of. of the gospel now i'm putting this in parentheses because perhaps this is an interpretation okay i would say probably not because we're just we're taking out the not and we're changing ashamed to this word proud okay but it could be an interpretation it could be an interpretation so i'm just putting it in brackets and i'm specifying positively paul is proud of 
the gospel. And then what I'm going to do here is investigate. So maybe, maybe we thought, oh, that's an obvious statement. Paul is not ashamed of the gospel. But to say that Paul is proud of the gospel, that's, that's a quite different sense. Anyway, so we're going to investigate that. We're going to investigate that, okay? Anyone make, everyone making sense with what I'm doing here? I, I see here this word for, okay? And I, I want to investigate... Um, uh, so here's a question. So is everyone tracking with why I asked this question here? I'm not 100% sure what the previous relationship is, okay? I'm, I'm going to investigate this word here, okay? So this is a question. This is a question I'm asking. Now, maybe me personally, I can identify that because I'm so familiar. But in, in, in one sense, too, I'm, I'm, I'm joining with you that, that for, perhaps you don't know. And so we want to ask the question, what is the relationship with the previous context? So I'm looking at, this is specifically verse 15. Okay, so that's a legitimate question. That's a, that's a good question, right? Everyone tracking with me? Possible question, Tim? Yeah. Uh, could this be a possible question? How did Paul came to a conclusion that he is not ashamed of the gospel? Great, great. So no, that so let's let's do a let's do a, a question section here. Can can we ask this question? Why is Paul not? I think this is what you're asking, right? Why is Paul not ashamed of the gospel? Yeah. See if anyone can answer that in the context, or at least have a clue that you want to investigate. Does the context tell us? Great question, though. Excellent question. This is a question that we would want to include in our sermon. Just thinking off the bat, that's a question that people would have, because we are ashamed, right? We're ashamed of the gospel. We don't want to share it, right? So we're so afraid to share the gospel. So Paul's not ashamed. We, I want to know why. Great question. Why is Paul not ashamed of the gospel? Excellent. Great. Great question, Kuya. What, what other do we have here? What other do we have here? Perhaps then we also want to investigate this what is the relationship that this word is signifying. So I'm asking, so the question I want to ask is this relationship here. That's essentially what I'm asking. What is the relationship between 16A and 16B? Okay, so that is the question that we're asking. Excellent. Excellent. And what, what other, what other, does anyone have another, does anyone have another uh, question or comment, observation? I'll make an observation, repetitive word. Okay, repetitive word. I'm going to make, I'm going to make, I'm going to highlight some repetitive words. I'm going to use, in making repetitive words, I'm going to use a green highlighter. One. Two, so we have uh, from faith, for faith, by faith, 
Okay, so there's, so what I'm gonna highlight here is, Same question. Yes. Same? Yeah, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Uh, what's the significance why Paul has to write to the Jew first and to the gen to the Greek? Excellent. Great. Is there so here, so here. Excellent question. So we want to ask the question here, and this, so this would be, let's just come over here, and just because some some questions are very specific, I'll I, I want to still try to keep. We should try to keep some type of order here. So, um, yeah. So this is a, a why does Paul claim that? Salvation is first for the Jews. Is there a significance? Great job. Excellent. So for your assignment number six, which we'll, which we'll discuss later, we're gonna be doing something just like this, okay? Something very similar to this, okay? What other questions or observations that you have? Good. Does someone have a question or an observation? I, I heard I heard that noise. Who wants to say? I do, Pastor Tim. Okay, so we'll do Alex first, and then we'll do, is it Mark second? So Alex, go ahead. In that context, can I ask this kind of question? Yeah. If the gospel is the power of God for salvation, then why does everyone doesn't believe in it? Okay. Okay, so that's, so, yeah, so let's write that question down, but let's hold that loose. Okay, no, that, that, that's, that's really good. That is a good question. That, let's, let's add that. That's on the border of is it possible, but actually Romans answers that question. So that's a great question, Alex. That was on the border, but thinking about Romans, Romans answers that question. So excellent question. So let's, let's put that there. So what I want to say is that questions like that, um, we just have to hold them loosely because maybe that's beyond the text. But Alex's question is awesome. So if, uh, no, let me go back here. Since, uh, no, you're right. You said if, you said if. If the gospel contains The power of God for salvation. Why does not everyone believe? Excellent question, Alex. The more I think about it, that is a that is a that is a phenomenal question that Romans answers. Excellent, I like it. Good. What what are some other questions or observations that you have? Uh, who was next? Was it Mark or Sunny? Who was the one that that spoke after Alex? It's it's me, <laughs> but I have the same answer uh, with the Alex question. Oh, so you had the same question as Alex? Yes. Ah, great. Everyone, to everyone who believes. 
and yeah, the same question with you, Alex. Yeah, great. So I'm going to piggyback your comment with who believes, right? So my question for this who believes, the question I want to ask here is, uh, what is the difference between the word, the words, believe, and faith. <laughs> That's a good one, right? Why is there two different words? That's essentially the question here, right? Everyone tracking with me? I want to ask this question here. You have faith, faith, faith. What about this belief? Is that is is belief different? Is it, is it a lower bar? Is it a higher bar? Why why is there a different? Why does it say to everyone who has faith, right? Why is it a different word? We want to investigate that. Okay. Uh, theme observation. Yeah. Go ahead. The power of God is limited to. The power of God for salvation is limited only to those who believe. Great. No, so that is an observation. That is not an inference. That is not an interpretation. That is in the text. It is the power of God for salvation. So, so um, we could say the object of this, the object, and this is a person, right? The object of the power of God, right? So the power of God, and so I'm just going to make an observation. And, and, and I'm going to add your observation. So, so this here is a, is a purpose, right? The power of God for salvation, right? And then the object is the person. And then we have here, what you're saying is you're, you're limiting this. This is a limitation. So we could say this is a description or you call it, which is fine. You call it a limitation, which is really true. It's, it's limiting everyone. So it's, it's, a specific, it's a specific type of person. So let's make an observation here. Excellent observation, Pastor Henry. Does everyone see that? It's limited to those who believe. All right. And then we could say, let's make another one. Let's make another observation. I'm going to piggyback you, Kappa, that I'm going to piggyback you, number three. But, so I'm connecting here, but there is only one limitation. <laughs> Belief, love, right? It doesn't say for those who believe and are baptized. It doesn't say those who believe in our church members, right? It's the power of God for salvation to those who are taking Lord's Supper. <laughs> right? That's not, the, the, the salvation is limited by one condition, belief. Now, that, again, doesn't mean that that saving belief, that saving faith does not call or does not cause something else like obedience etc blah 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 but the limiting factor there's one limitation belief okay so this is an observation this is not an inference it's not negotiable it's not uh um when we combine epistolary genre we combine the, the primary topic of the gospel and salvation, righteousness of God. We combine all of these things. This is a, a, a hard fact. There is one limitation to receive God's power for salvation. Belief. Everyone tracking me there? 
Now, the question, can I ask a question in connection with Kuya Henry's? I'm going to piggyback Kuya Henry. So then my question is going to be is number five. Uh, what is God saving those people from? <laughs> right? The text doesn't say, but we need to discover. Why do they need, or we could say, uh, why do they need salvation? Maybe this is a better question. Why do they need salvation? Right? Maybe that's a better question. Why do they need salvation? These are essentially asking the same thing. What other observations or questions that we have? What about defining, what about defining a concept? What's some concepts that we want to define here? What are some, what are some words that we want to define? I, I'll list two and then you can add if you want. Um, Power. Okay, yeah, okay, great. So define, define power, right? So that's a question in the sense that it needs to be researched, Diva. Define power, number two, uh, define, I want to define righteousness of God. What does righteousness of God mean? What's another word that we want to define? Faith so, uh, and believe. Belief? You want to define belief? Did someone say that? No. Yeah, belief and faith. The, yes. the, the, I think it's, it's a, the participle. The, uh, believe in uh, the word faith because it's repeated. <laughs> Sunny. <laughs> it's good, Sunny. Define belief and define belief and faith. And you're already getting to it. So, good. Great. We really want to investigate that. Any other, rep any other repetitive words? Do you see any other repetitive words in here? Any other repetitive words? Righteous. Yeah. So we want to explore a repetitive word here. So let's highlight it a different color. So if you're doing this on your own, I would highlight, I would have different highlighters. How about the, uh, the Old Testament quotations or the righteousness shall live by faith from the book of Habakkuk? Okay, so okay, so here's a great this is a great observation. If you have a cross reference and it highlights what's the what's the reference, Sonny? Uh Habakkuk chapter two, two four, I think it's two four. So observation, observation here. Because we have a cross reference Bible, we're looking at the text that gives it, right? Four. So two four. Yes, great. So uh, Paul quotes the Old Testament, Habakkuk So then the question is we need to investigate the context of Habakkuk 2, 4. Okay? Another, another phrase, Sir Tim, the, this phrase, from faith for faith, what does it mean? <laughs> ah, great. Great question, number 10.
So you can kind of see here really the type of questions and observations we're making. I, I hope that everyone's really seeing this. Any other verbal actions? I'm seeing some other verbal actions here. Um, what other actions? What about pronouns? I'm looking here at the list here. Uh, I have, we need to identify pronoun antecedents. Any pronouns in here that we see? Any pronouns? We do and Greek. So those are nouns. Those would not be pronouns. A pronoun is like it. It's like he, she, they, them. In it, it is, in it. So can, can we identify the first it? Does someone want to try to identify the first it? Gospel. It is. Gospel. Or gospel. Right? Gospel. So we can define uh, for for it for the so we can let's just substitute so we're not even thinking about it for the gospel for the gospel in the gospel is the power of God for salvation. <laughs> so much stronger and so much stronger for the gospel is the power of God for salvation. Next for in it what is the it again? The gospel. Yes. There's no, so here, if you know Greek or especially, well, not so much Hebrew, but Greek, the words will match. They, they will match in, in uh, person, number, and not necessarily case, but person and number. So it would be masculine or feminine, I mean masculine or feminine or neuter, and it will also be singular or plural. And so, the, so if you know Greek, it's going to easily match. Sometimes it won't, though. If it's, if it's not a very specific, but it's more generic, okay? But typically, most often, it will match. And so, but in English, just logically, for in it, there's no other it. It can't be. Logically, we would say, could it be Jew or Greek? No, that doesn't make sense. Could it be power? No, that doesn't make sense. Salvation? No, it has to be gospel. So logically, so logically, it must be gospel, okay? So for in the gospel... For in the gospel, the righteousness of God. Now, what type of word is is revealed? Present. Present. Action. So, so uh, uh, Pastor Henry is giving the tense, which is correct, is revealed, so it's a present tense. But, but Koyo Bobo is also yeah, is. in the type of verb, it is an action. It's an action. So let's do this. This is this is uh, an action, and uh, the, we what, let's let's go deeper. So so it's a present tense. Now, righteousness of God is that. What is that? So so this is the action. So this is where we're going to ask. Um, let's ask. The, so I'm going to ask the question now. Maybe we have we have the answer now. Um, how is the uh, how is the righteousness of God revealed? <laughs> okay, yes, great question. <laughs> yeah. So number one, who is the actor? So this is where we want to. Uh, uh, what is the object? Um, and then we're also going to ask the question. Uh, how is the righteousness of God revealed? Now, what question does this answer here? What, what type of question is this answering? I'm looking here now at my list. I'm looking here at my list. I see, so I'm gonna go to the top here. Let me just come back here. I'll go back here. Ah, here we go. When I say what type of question, who, does it, is it answering who, what, when, where, why, how, for what purpose? What is in it answering? The why. Or not. 
in it. In it. Is that why? I don't know. The purpose of doing. Is it purpose in it? For in it. What what does the adjective in? Salo <laughs> of. Location, Dibal location. Where? It's asking it's answering where. Where is the gospel revealed? So here, this is an answer, a, a, a where question. I think it's why. This is location, Diba, location. For in the gospel, so we know where God's God's righteousness is revealed, right? Location. So we're still asking how. How? So, so let's, let's leave this question here. Maybe it's going to be revealed to us in our study. What about the object? What is being revealed? The righteousness. So, so do you see how we're asking the question and then we're answering it? Okay, so it, righteousness of God cannot be the actor. Hindi poini. You're either going to have an actor, an action, an object, or then some type of qualification of, of the actor or the action. So this is this has to clearly be the object. It can't be the actor. Object, and this is a thing. Or we could say a concept. If you want to think about a, a concept, it's not a literal thing. Righteousness, law, it's a law term. Righteousness is a concept, it's not a... It's not a thing, a physical thing. So maybe we want to go with here, okay? So then we've answered this. We need to, we need to investigate this. And then we have the answer here. This is answered. What about the actor? Who is the actor? So we want to say, who is the one revealing the righteousness of God? Who is the, who is the one? Right? Revealing. It has to be God. It has to be God. And the reason why we know it has to be God is because of the location. If it's in the gospel, <laughs> there's no other man that's <laughs> No one else is doing it. God is the one who revealed the gospel to us. And that's just a logical inference from the context. Now, maybe you would say, Tim, that's an interpretation. Maybe this is this is what Alex is saying, the subjective part. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Ding. Yes. Uh, observation. Go ahead. Observation. Uh, I think uh, the number one unbeliever, the number one unbeliever are the Jews and the second and followed by the Greek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that so that would be a, a that is a, in a, in one sense an interpretation because you're you're interpreting what this first means. So let's ask as a question: Does it mean the Jews are a greater sinner or a first sinner than the Greek? Can, can we can we change that to a question? Wait, 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 okay. So you you're, you're seeing. I hope you're seeing that that interplay between an observation and a question uh in in some sense we're really defining this first and, and maybe sometimes it's clear here it's less clear so i think we should ask the question let's do here um let's further define this question here so here i just added two further did they sin first, or maybe they're a greater sinner, right? So we're, we're asking more questions to try to get at the answer. And that's helpful. Asking more questions helps us. That's where we're becoming a good questioner. We're, we're trying to get to that root. But at the end of the day, we have to investigate, okay? We have to, we ha and so when I say investigate, when I'm talking about investigating, where from our studies before, where do we, I'm, so this is a side, a, a tangential question. You know what? Let's take a break. I'm going to ask this question. Let's take a break. Okay, let's take a, a seven-minute break, and then we'll come back at 8, 8.20 and finish up here. And we won't go to Romans 3. Maybe we'll say that for another time. Um, um, where, 
The question I want us to think about is where would we investigate? So now I'm thinking about where do we where do we seek to find the answer? So let's let's think about this question here. Let's take a break and let's think about this question here. And I'm already seeing here we have more than 10 questions and we still have many to go. So uh, we have many observations, okay? We have, and we still have many to go, okay? So what I want us to see here is at the end of this class, we're going to count up the questions and observations. And in two verses, I predict we're gonna have maybe close to 30 question, questions or observations, okay? Um, this is going deep, okay? This is going deep. Now I wanna say that we can't, Perhaps we can't cover everything in the theological and then in the, uh, in the uh, practical portion of our, when we present this as a teaching or as a preaching, but we're gathering all the information now. We're, we're laying the foundation now. Okay, so let's take a break. Uh, Sir Tim, I have, a, I have a, another question uh, regarding this passage. Go ahead, go ahead. So the, uh, this is actually more uh, more uh, deeper. That's why I, I'm asking the questions uh, how, uh, regarding uh, regarding this quotation from the book of Habakkuk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, uh, the book of Habakkuk uh, also. Uh, I mean, when, when you read the book of Habakkuk, especially in um, Hebrew, yeah. uh, the, the the phrase is actually the righteous, the righteous. Uh, the righteous shall live by his faith or his faithfulness. Uh, but Apostle Paul is, you know, taking out that, um, uh, you know, uh, the <clears throat> the word his or the, that pronoun there, and just uh, using this uh, phrase, the righteous shall live by faith. So is this is, is there any significant to, to that? I mean, my question is, what 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 significant of of, of taking out those those um, pronoun uh, from 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 the Hebrew Bible, um, or 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 just uh, Apostle Paul quoted the the, the LXX the, the Greek the Greek uh, Old Testament version. I haven't investigated the Greek. Uh, I mean the the LXX. So uh, maybe that would also answer the question. So, you know, I'm laughing so hard. The reason why I'm laughing is because I had this question in a previous year, and I just, I think I've taught Greeks uh, twice before, and I, I, and I was like, you know what, it's too deep. I'm going to remove this from my discussion because that's really upper level. So, so then you ask it. <laughs> so, so that, sorry, that, sorry. Sorry. Good, good. <laughs> It's a huge, it's a it's, it's crazy. It's a huge debate. Um, mm -hmm. So the Hebrew says, the Masoretic text says, the righteous shall live by his faith, okay? As in the righteous is faith. The Septuagint yeah, he, 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 says, the righteous shall live by mm -hmm. my faith, as in the faithfulness of, of Yahweh, oh. the Lord. So, so, <coughs> oh my goodness. So, there is some, some people say from faith for faith is referring to it's always been by faith from Abraham's faith to mm -hmm. our faith, okay? And because you have Abraham in Romans 4, other people mm -hmm. say yeah. no, 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 no. it's not from Abraham's faith for our faith, it's always faith from conversion until death. The righteous live by faith. So from first to last, all the way through his faith. So it's not looking at Abraham and us. It's looking at the life of faith. And then the third, the third category, from faith is God's faithfulness. Righteous shall live by uh, faith, for faith. But we still have to exercise faith. So in order for us to be saved, God has to be faithful to his covenant, and we have to live faith. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't ever seen that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, because, because, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. My Old Testament to, to Old Testament to uh, research paper is about is in the book of Habakkuk. So I have to 
I have to exhaust the book of Habakkuk. <laughs> I just, I just, I just curious. Oh, this, this, this one is quoted from the book of Habakkuk. So I just look at that, and then the phrase is really, "The righteous shall live by his faithfulness." <laughs> so that, yeah, it's it's really interesting. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's really good. It's really good. And yeah, and then and 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 what you have said that uh, you know God is being faithful to His covenant. It, it really answers the this. You know, enigmatic questions, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. You, you know, and this is where this is where, to be honest with you, all of that whole description is true. You can have you can have a strong argument for each one. Mm. I have flip flopped. I have flip flopped on different interpretations here, and maybe this is not this is not in line with the single meaning, but. I'm inclined to say that all, all three, the word of God is so deep. I would say all three. I would say Romans teaches all three. If, if we're yeah, going to be yeah. saved, God has to be faithful to the covenant. He has to be faithful yeah. to the promise, the covenant that he will save us. But we yeah, yeah. have to exercise faith. It is in the book of Romans, 100%. The whole point of Paul is that it's always been by faith. Abraham was yeah. a first gen. He was, he was saved. And when was he saved? He wasn't saved as a Jew under the law. He was saved as a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and we're called to have faith now. And, and in Romans 4, it actually says, he is the example for us. Is it, this, he is the example for us to have faith as well. And then it is true that the righteous shall live by faith, meaning to say that it's not, it's not just at conversion. It's a life of faith. We, in Corinthians 1, uh, 15, 1 to 4, we receive it. We cling to it. We stand on it. We're being saved by it. So, yes. <laughs> you know, it's like, how can you, you know, and that's not, you know, don't tell, maybe, maybe Kuya Boya won't like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same thing. Same. Yeah, go ahead. I think it has some similar kind of statement in Second Timothy chapter two verse thirteen. Read it. Where it says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. So, is that any in any way related to that statement that God will remain faithful even if we become faithless in the end or something? Yes, because because God has made a covenant. God has made covenants. He, God always works through covenants. And so in the covenant, yeah. he must remain faithful. So mm -hmm. he must remain faithful to his agreement in the covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, some covenants mm -hmm. are conditional. Others are unconditional. Okay, But concerning his unconditional yeah. covenant to save, he has to remain faithful. And so there's many passages that describe the faithfulness of God. That's one example. And, and, and Timothy, great example. In, in Romans 2, it's the same thing. Even if the Jews are faithless, even if they are liars, let them, let them be a liar and God remain faithful. Yeah, the, same. the same. So it's, you really see just the depth. And in some ways, you know, I don't want to make a choice. And, and maybe this is, you know, we'll talk about that through the semester. But, you know, I chose this passage because it just, I want you to see the depth. I want you to see the depth of the Word of God. And, and, I, and I also want to say is that you, you bring up Habakkuk. When I did a study, because advanced hermeneutics, <laughs> if you preach from this passage, you have to do the whole same process for Habakkuk 2.4 to really understand <laughs> what So it's like two sermons in one. <laughs> um, so you know, and I'm not even going to really go down in the hermeneutical process. We're not going to look into the whole background study, context study, uh, theological study. <laughs> in the, I'm back in two four. But what I'm trying to say is that it's so deep. The Word of God is so deep. And if CGST had a a, a thesis, my support for all the t students would be for them to do. This is like a massive research paper. Instead of preaching a sermon, you could write a 40-page paper, easy, on Romans 1, 16 to 17. Easy. 
easy. And it, you wouldn't even be stressed. I promise you, you would not even be stressed. Just going through the steps and just each step, going through it, you could easily prepare. Any one of you could do it. It would, it would take time, but we could do it. And you could just see the depth. And let me just read a passage. before We're going to start here, but let me just read a passage of Scripture. Let me bring this passage of Scripture. Because I think, I think this says it all um, with what you're bringing up. And uh, I know I'm talking too much. Please forgive me. I'm, I'm, I, kinda, I, I hijacked the conversation. Queen, I'm sorry. Uh, but here, I want to read this passage of Scripture for us. So look at, look at the end of, this is the end. Oh, it's, kind of, it's kind of small. I'm sorry if you can't see it. Um, uh, beginning in verse 33, if everyone can see that. This is, this is the conclusion of the gospel, the description of the gospel, Romans. Oh, the depth and the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or, or who has ever given a gift to him to be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. Be glory to him forever. Amen. And what, what can we do? We're studying two passages of scripture. We've spent an hour. We're going to spend another half an hour. And <laughs> it's so deep. It's like the ocean. The word of God is not a swimming pool. It's an ocean. It's the ocean. You can swim. You can swim in the sea. Your child can swim in the sea. And we can send a submarine down five miles deep. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean... <laughs> And Cy Young, if we're just on the surface, Cy Young, if we're just in the kiddie pool, Cy Young, Talaga, it's Cy Young. It's so sad. So, let's go. Yeah, good. I have a question. In, in, chapter, uh, in verse 16, everyone who believes, how does it say about the election that is mentioned in uh, Romans chapter 9? So yeah, it's it's asking, you're, ask, hold on, you're asking concerning the question of election in here in verse one sixteen. Yes. Okay. So because it says says here it is limited to all who believes. How about in the election? Okay. So let's 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 ask that question. Okay. Because what sometimes now maybe so here's a question though. Mark, that's a great question uh, because we're looking at belief, the condition of belief, and then election. So maybe we will be able to find the answer in this context. Maybe that this would be a question that's beyond this text. You see what I'm saying? But let's ask the question and let's think about it. So your question is, uh, what is the relationship between the condition to belief and election in Romans 8, 28 to 30. So let's think about that. Um, maybe there's an answer. Maybe it's beyond this text, okay? But let's think about that. At least when you come to Romans 8, you want to consider the two as well. So, so, and, so maybe, maybe we need to consider that, okay? All right, um, great question. So let's move along here. Well, let's first answer this question. So before we leave, I want to ask this, I ask this question. Before we go back to the text, where would we investigate? We're trying to find answers. Where, what are some locations? And, and really, from all our time, this is maybe an application question from our previous discussions. 
So we're asking where. Where can we look to find answers? I'll answer one, right? So we can look, we can look at the broader context, right? The broader context of Romans, right? That's one place we could find answers, okay? Where else can we find answers? Uh, Romans chapter three. Yes, yeah, so, so, so the broader context, no, that's great. So this would be, this would be Romans one to 16, okay? So yeah, so within the context of Romans, so, that would, so it would include Romans three, right? It would include Romans three. Okay. Where else? So we can look into Romans to find, where else can we look to find, where else can we investigate to find answers? I'm just... Other books, Ephesians. Yeah, so other, other books written by Paul. By Paul, yeah. Yeah, into textual, Ephesians chapter 1. Yeah, so Ephesians 1. Yeah, so, so an example could be Ephesians 1 as an example. Where else? Where else can we look? Give me some more answers. Again, I'm, I'm, using, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this because I want you to be thinking for your assignment as well, uh, your passage. Where else can we look? Uh, uh, I want to explore on the belief that believes how, 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 Paul, was, uh, how Paul was convinced he convinced, he was convinced of that belief. So it's in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 1, verse 12, yeah. So yeah, so we're looking at other places. Yeah, so 2 Timothy, Ephesians. We can also look in Galatians. We can look in, uh, we can look in Colossians. Uh, Somewhere in Philippians, there's a general also about. Yeah, so... We would, look at, we would look at parallel passages that have belief and faith, okay? So, so absolutely, absolutely. This, this is more fundamental than this. This is more understanding belief in the context of, of Romans is more fundamental, but, but this is, these are also helpful, okay? Where else? Where else can we look to get? So we can look in the broader context of Romans. We can look in other books. Where else can we look? I'm thinking broadly now. Think about other tools, other resources we can use. The cloud. Cloud. Cloud research. No, the cloud research tool. So thinking about here, uh, we could also look at um, uh, Step Bible. So let's let's go let's let's go really quick back to Step Bible. Let's go back to Step Bible. I'm going to go back to Romans. Romans one. So here, so I, so let's just an example here. So I'm going to, so if I'm looking here, I'm going to click on belief. And so by clicking on belief, I, I get, I get the definition here. The definition is here, but then I also get this meaning here. And then I get a whole bunch of other passages here where the, the where the word is used. There's a lot of information here. Okay. So this is this is a tool that you can use. Uh, yeah, in Mark chapter uh, Mark chapter thirteen verse twenty. Yeah, there is no really explicit about you know for the sake of the elect whom he chose. He shortened the days. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 that's a place you want to investigate. And and just looking here, I see a lot of overlap with faith and belief. So that. That might answer our question, is belief the same as faith? And, and I'm, I'm thinking it, it is, because you're seeing all this overlap, almost like it's the same word. Okay, does everyone see that? You have belief here, but then you have faith. Believe, believer, but then down here, faith, put trust. So I'm, I'm very suspicious that belief, belief is actually the same word or the same root as faith. So, so coming back to here, you, you have a, lexic, a lexicon as a resource within Step Bible to, to, to look at look up some of these meanings. You also have you also have uh, cross references. Let's go back to Step Bible for a minute. So I'm coming back to Step Bible here. If you notice here, the A 
you see the A there, the little toggle A? There's also, okay, someone was saying Mark 8, I think 838. And also there's an Old Testament context. Psalm, let's go to Psalm 40, verse 9. So I just went to Psalm 40, verse 9, a cross-reference. I have told the glad news of deliverance. And if I click on glad news, to announce salvation, good news. So actually this glad news is like the gospel. It's the same word. It seems to be the same word. And deliverance, I look at deliverance, and deliverance is uh, righteousness. I have told the, 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 the good news of righteousness in the great congregation. So it sounds like there's a proclamation of the gospel in the Old Testament. <laughs> look at this. I have not hidden your deliverance within my, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. <laughs> Can I get an altar call here? This is what we've been talking about. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. And you know what? <laughs> this is going to blow your minds, okay? So great congregation in the Septuagint is actually ecclesia, church. <laughs> Oh, my word. So what I'm trying to get at here is that there's so many, uh, there's so many traje trajectories we can go with. Um, step Bible, you have lexicon, you have cross-references, you have, you have commentaries here. All right. Um, and then even as another resource looking at these, you also have you also have commentaries. Again, these are just places that you can go to, to research, okay? Dictionaries. Bible Hub and Step Bible, you just need to just, we need to just be, we need to really be using Step Bible and, um, uh, and Bible Hub. I might actually assign that. I might actually assign because that'll force you to have questions to, to meet with me. So is everyone tracking? I wanted just to bring this your, to your attention again, because you, maybe you're stressed by all these questions, you're stressed by these observations. And again, I want to just remind you that the, the tools, the power is on the internet. And, uh, um, and I, want, I want you just to not to be stressed because it's there. But again, your assignment, again, we're just looking at the next day. We're not worried about the future. Your assignment is, is going to be just making observations and questions for your text. Let's, let's go ahead. We have about nine to 10 more minutes. What are some other observations that you have? What are some other observations or questions that you have from this text? I, I do want to finish this. As it is written. Written. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned here, that's great. So. Um, we want to ask the question, well, we already identified this, Diba. This is a OT citation, Diba. We've already identified that. Okay. So then um, what we see here is that uh, the question maybe I want to ask is, it seems... Actually, we can make this observation because we've already done the background study. We've talked about this. Remember in the background study, I've said, remember in the, uh, the context study, and also we talked about how the gospel was highlighted in the Old Testament. It's, it's, it's not something new. So we could make this, we could ask as a question or an inference, um, the gospel is proclaimed, or we could say written in the Old Testament. Now, maybe you're saying, Tim, I think that's an interpretation. Okay, fair enough. So we could just do this, or we could do question. All right, we could turn it into a question and then we can do the research, okay? We can confirm it, all right? Great, what about this word? What is this word signifying? 
the uh, the connection, uh, <clears throat> the conjunction, the, the use of conjunction. Yeah. So what? For we want, go ahead. So we want to say what? What relationship, Diva? Sunny. Or were you going to give me? Were you were you going to give me a relationship? Now here's the thing. The reason why I want to say what relationship, I don't want to, because there's two possibilities here. This could be a comparison, or this could be a cause. For in it, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, because it has been written. That's cause. Because it has been written, the righteous shall live by faith. Or... If it's just a comparison or analogous, you would say, just as it has been written. So, so causal is saying because this is just, uh, just as. In agreement, right? Causal is stronger. It's stronger, okay? Now, again, I don't want us to be stressed out, okay? We can preach a very simple sermon that's gospel-centered from this. We can preach a deep sermon, okay? I don't want you to be stressed saying, how could I do this? Please do, if you come away with saying, how could I do this? You know, you've totally missed the point. I don't want you to, to, to feel like that. I want you to, 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 to look at, number one, your, your text is going to be similar. There is going to be a lot of observations and questions that you are going to make, number one. Number one. N number two, it can be shallow, it can be basic, it can be deep, okay? Our goal is not to jump in the deep end of the pool. Right now, I'm learning how to swim. I am literally using a little board, a little board, and I'm just kicking my feet. I'm not even, pra I cannot... I am not good enough to do both motions. I am so bad at swimming. I do one lap and my legs hurt, okay? People swim for hours, okay? I am at the beginning stage. I'm just doing a little bit, okay? So again, do not be stressed. I am assuring you, okay? Do not be stressed, just do a little bit. But I, want, I really want you to see how deep we can go. And I want you to come away with the idea that what your time that you're investing, the time that you're investing is going to be worth it for your ministry. It's going to be worth it for your family. It's going to be worth it for, you, for your personal life, your personal life, your family, and your ministry, okay? And maybe your, your ministry is always your family. That's fine. That's what God has called us to do, okay? I want to make several other observations, and we will close here. Um, we want to investigate this word as well. So we want to ask for this relationship here. So I'm going to ask what relationship here? What is this relationship? Okay. It's going to be related here in some fashion. What is that relationship? So we're looking at... What is that relationship, okay? And then lastly, what I want us to see here, and maybe you have another observation that we can ask, but I really want to highlight, what is, what is this, what are these two words here? What are these two words? What, what kind of word, uh, Danny, what type of word is this? Uh, future, uh, shall live. So it's a future, future tense, excellent. So if it, if it has a future tense, what type of verb? I'm giving you the word verb. What, what is it? Live. Live. Yeah, so this is a, an action. Uh, I just gave it Sorry. Action. It's an action word. An action. And, and the tense is future, okay? Now, what I find so interesting, it doesn't say the righteous shall live by works and faith. It doesn't say the righteous shall live by, by faith and the sacraments. Diva, wala talaga. So I want to ask, what is this, what type of qualification? Now I am going to say 
possibly means, or we could say instrument. The instrument or the means, so this is again a question here, okay? The means or the instrument by which the righteous will live. You would think it's the righteous live by works, right? They're law keeping, but no, it's by faith. And so, yeah. Was there a question already about who are the righteous? Who are the ones considered righteous? <laughs> yeah, so there's not a question. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. So this is the that this is the actor here. And so we want to say here, who are the righteous? Who are the righteous or who are considered as righteous? Yeah. Excellent. I think have we have we exhausted the observations and the questions? The answer is no. Yeah, how about the uh, uh, conjunction four? Uh, it's been recurring in in, in in the text three times, and many times in the in the in this just chapter, chapter alone. The conjunctions well, you're saying, like um, you're saying it's a repetitive word. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The four, four, it, four in it, four. For it is the power, and it just has been started from verse nine and end up in verse twenty, I think. So yeah, many times. Oh, so it's many times. Okay, so so let's just just do here. Um, I'm just gonna not. It's let me see here. I use my daughter's favorite color. What and why? <laughs> we got two questions there. What and why? Okay. What and why? All right. So, um, I any other comments or questions? I don't want to. Anyone else speak now or forever hold your peace? I hope that everyone is kind of seeing. Everyone is really seeing the types of questions we're asking. The relationship between observation and question, everyone's really kind of tracking with that. So your, your, your questions are going to be different, um, but I hope that you get a sense of what this is going to be like, okay? And uh, one, okay. one last observation. Is it possible, Pak, can we add, can I add one? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The word everyone, to everyone. Who is it? To everyone. It yeah. is not only to the Jew and to the Greek. So let's make the observation not limited to the by Jews. ethnicity. Yes. Bam. That's good. That's great. No, that's good. Not limited by ethnicity. Okay. So, cool. Um, and this also, if we're thinking about this, this is going back up to the to the um, the barbarian, right? This is from verse from verse fifteen. Diba. There's a whole list that he's eager to preach the gospel. Okay, great. So what I want us to see here is that this is not a this is not a, an exhaustive list of questions and observation, but it is the most fundamental. It is the most fundamental, okay? And so, um, uh, you know, this took us an hour and a half. Sometimes you don't have that much time. So I'm not saying that you should always be doing it to this extent. Sometimes you need to spend this much time, okay? So just be flexible. I, I, I really hope and see that, that, you know, there's a lot of different trajectories this can go. And, um, and I, I hope that you're excited. I hope that this gives a sense of, of, of excitement. I think the more we practice this through the semester, we'll, we will all become good at this. And I, I am excited. I love doing this. And um, you want to know something? This is the truth. For a small group, for a small group, you can do something like this. So what I would do in a small group, it, you, you would have a time where people can – You'd want to teach them about just like I taught you, like how do you make observations, how do you do questions. 
And then in small group, you could work through this process and procedure. Now you have to plan ahead of time to answer the question. So this is where Corey and Bull Boys, you need to know the answers. You can't just go to the small group with no answers, okay? Because they're gonna have so many questions and then they'll leave so sad. In one sense, maybe you're sad because I did not answer your questions, okay? But we will get there. But so, or you can have the time in the small group where you focus primarily on questions, observations, and then you have answers the next week, that's fine. So, so I do, but what I'm trying to say is that in a small group Bible study, this can be a, they call it inductive Bible study. This can be a method of really learning, okay? So, so um, I hope and trust that, especially for many of you who are small group leaders, that over time you can develop this skill. And then all you would do is once people really understand, they see the questions, they, they see the struggles, then you, you boom, you give them the answer. You give them what the gospel is. You give them what their need is. You give them, uh, you give them the answers, and then they will be filled they will have a better understanding of the passage and then you, you can go and apply it in your, in your daily life. So, you know, this is, it's not rocket science and, and most of us can do it. We just have to be patient. And here's the thing, Mungo Kabbatin, the more you spend time in here, you, your boldness, like Paul grows, you become bold, you become, you become not proud in a negative way, a proud in the Hannah sense from our study of prayer in, in the Hannah. You, you are proud in the gospel. You are proud in the power of God. Um, uh, and, and you will see, you'll be able to share it with those around you. You will, you will, you will be successful. So I hope that this is the first step in, in your step towards becoming confident in the gospel, confident in the explanation of the word of God. At the same time, always recognizing that we need to depend on Christ, that we that we are we are broken. We we, are, we keep humility, but in another sense, we are we are we are not ashamed. <laughs> we're not afraid. We're not afraid, and we're not ashamed. Okay, so let's let's just close with the the, the assignment, the the, the 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 assignment for tonight, uh, for next week. Now, uh, team. Yeah, team. Yes, a uh, team. Can I add? Okay, in, <clears throat> for me, I think I think you know, after our, after after we have been working through this night, uh, it comes to my mind that, that the, for, the reason why, why hermeneutics was brought out or we have this hermeneutics is because God wants, God wants to show his creations the relationship that has been established before the creation. And he wants to restore that back relationship. He wants to restore that relationship through his son, which is found in the gospel or which is written in the Bible. So if we want to make some observations, for me, I know for me, if I want to make some observations and even questions, it should more or less be uh, to, to, it should more or less narrow or zero to the relationship that God wants us to, to be aware or to, to come into our mind that relationship that he has already established beforehand. So the questions which we should be asking is always centered towards those, uh, to that relationship that he has for us. Yes, excellent Excellent, um, excellent observation, pa Pastor Henry. Excellent observation. Our goal in mind is towards the relationship with God, his will and his command. That's always the goal for us. That's always the goal for us. And, and, and it's, it's thousands of years of different context. So the word of God is deep because there's thousands of years of different context and, 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 and then there's thousands of years of him revealing himself to us. So, so that, that is an excellent idea to always have that goal. Our, goal. our goal in this pursuit is always on our relationship and the restoration with God to know him and to love him. To know and love him. To know and love him. Always. Excellent. Excellent. I, I can't, that's it. I can't, I can't do a, have a better closing than that, than that observation, Kuya. It's, it's almost now. So 
let's just quickly your assignment now. Um, uh, if possible, I would like you to work on assignment number five and number six. So if you can do both, okay, number five is the context and number six is, I'll give it to you right now. So assignment number six is question and answers. I shouldn't say question. It should be question and observations. I'm sorry. That's wrong. Assignment number six, this should be question and observations. It should change that. It should be questions and observations I will post. And so I just want for the CT students, 15 questions or observations, 15 lang. So we had maybe 30 or 35 plus, okay? I just want 15 lang. So maybe it's seven questions, eight observations. Maybe it's 10 questions, five observations. Maybe it's, maybe it's, it should not be 15 observations. Maybe it's 12 observations, three questions, okay? So if you wanna do more, that's fine. If, if you really get into it and you wanna do 20, great, okay? But I'm looking for at least 15. Uh, MAT, MATC, I want 20, okay? I want five more, I want five more. But remember, you have, you have the pattern, you have the pattern. So you can take these, uh, let's just go, I, wanna, I do wanna say one quick thing, so I do wanna say one quick thing, so let's just come back here really quick, I wanna show this. And then... So one thing I wanna say here is that if you notice here, um, you can ask, like, so here, um, uh, you can ask the question, who is the actor, uh, um, for the revealing of the righteousness, okay? So that's where you're taking my general question and you're making it specific, okay? So you can do that. You can say, if you don't know, what is the object of what is being revealed, okay? So... I'm, I'm, I'm taking that general question and making it specific. Is everyone tracking with me what I'm, what I'm, at, what I'm saying? I mean to say that you can use these as a template, just use them in context. So I don't want you to say just, what is the actor of verse 17? I want, I, I want you to identify the action and then ask what is the actor, or you can identify the actor if you know it, okay? So, so use these as a pattern, but use it specific in your specific verses, okay? You just can't copy and rewrite it, okay? So, so I want you to be thinking about those questions though, okay? And here's the thing, if you are struggling with your passage, I will make a deal. If you are struggling with your passage and you're working ahead of time on Saturday, if, if you can send me a message and we can work on it together for, for one hour. So if you want help with your passage, we can do that. You can, send, but you need to send me a message ahead of time, and it has to be at least the day before. Send me an email or a, or a Facebook message. Can you help me? And, and on Saturday from two to three, I can I can I can answer your questions. We can work on together, and anyone can watch. Anyone can come in and watch. Okay, but I need I need that at least one day in advance so we can plan. Can we also do what you are doing, like putting colors, putting questions, like object actor? Do we also do that uh, in our homework or just uh, write the question and observations plainly? All right, so I will do this, okay? Um, if, you want, if you want to do like this, uh, if you want to do like, like this, and you're, you can follow my pattern, I will let you do it, okay? But it must be neat, it must be neat, and I need you to at least, like so for example, if this is an observation, I want you to put like a observation one, uh, observation number one. So you still need to label, you need to label them for me. So I know that you, you know that you're observed. So you can do here, you can do uh, question number two, like that, okay? So I need you, it needs to be neat. Uh, it needs to be neat, but yet, so here's what you could do. Again, if it's neat, you could print out your text and you could use pencil and pen and markers, okay? Just take a picture of it. You don't have to scan. If you have a scanner, scan it. That's fine. But if you have a, a smartphone, it has to be clear. Uh, take it in really good light, in sunlight. You can just take a picture and then message me the picture. I will accept it. As long as it's clear, I can read it. I can, I, I can mark up a picture with my pencil, no problem, okay? So I will allow that. I will allow that, okay? All right? And you could do a combination, meaning to say you could have some like this, 
And then on a second page, you have something like this. You can do both, okay? So, yeah, I really want you to be in, in, in engaged in this. And I won't make any promises, but if I can, I will try to send you my color combination so that you can try it, okay? No promises, but I will try, okay? Anyway, you can see a verb is red, an actor is blue, an object is orange. Th those are the big ones, okay? Okay, we're gonna close in prayer. We're gonna close in prayer, and I wanna pick on someone who I've not yet asked to pray. And um, uh, Ati Shoni, can you pray for us? Uh, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for tonight na we have that amount para to learn the lesson uh, about righteousness, and we may apply this in every day in our life. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity na makapag-study po kami ng inyong words. And habang po kami yan na mag-rest para you give us, Lord, na tomorrow mag-refresh po ang may mag-atag po kami din. Kada pa kami ng strength to study more ng inyong words. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Amen.